You've seen how to write positive decimal integers in binary, but we haven't yet looked at how we can write negative integers in binary. And that's the point of this video. We're going to look at a system or a system of notation called two's complement that allows us to both express numbers that are negative and positive in binary, as well as perform arithmetic in a really elegant way. So let's get started. First of all, we want to think about how can we do this? How can we represent a negative integer in binary? We realize that as people, when we want to write a negative number, we just write a negative sign in front. But for a computer, computers have any notion of a negative sign, right? Computer um, represents information solely as bits, ones and zeros, trues and false, on and off. And uh, we would somehow need to represent uh, the negativeness right, the sign of our value in terms of bits. But so far, we've used bits just to represent a number. And so how can we um, take that number and indicate that it's either positive or negative? Well, since that has to be done in bits, the answer is we have to use one of the bits of the number as the sign. So we're going to dedicate part of that binary number as the sign. And one way to do that, and the most popular way to do that, is to take the most significant bit, or the leftmost bit, as a sign bit, rather than as part of the number itself. So what we say is that if the leftmost bit is a zero, then that means the rest of the number is a positive number. And if the leftmost bit is a one, then the rest of the number represents a negative value. But there are lots of different ways that we could actually accomplish that, you know, using the sign bit. Um, and so we want to find one that allows us to use the same logic that we've used for arithmetic and, and other operations um, without changing it for negative numbers, right? We want it to be efficient and, and work the same way. So let's look at uh, a couple different schemes. So here's our, here's a set of four, di uh, four bit numbers, right? Four binary um, digits, right? So the numbers we can create with four bits, the positive numbers are 0 through 15. And you've seen these before. If we want to be able to represent negative numbers, well then half of these values are going to have to be negative and half are going to be positive. And so we're going to use that first bit, that leftmost bit, as the indicator of the sign. So the first eight numbers, 0 through 7, you know, they have an implied 0 as the leftmost bit. I didn't write those, but really this is four zeros and then one is three zeros and a one, and two is two zeros and one zero, right? So um, this last number seven is zero, one, one, one. And then the uh, number that I have is eight here, one, zero, 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 would be the first of the negative values, right? And so one way we could do that is the following, right? We could say, okay, the first seven numbers, or excuse me, the first eight numbers, including zero, are just what they were. And then the eight, the number that was eight, well, that's going to be a negative number because the first, the leftmost bit is a 1. Well, what number would that be? Okay, so 1, this indicates that it's negative, and then the next three bits, the last three bits here, are 0, so this would be like negative 0, which sounds kind of weird. Okay, well, then we come to the next number that was 9, but now that leftmost bit is a 1, so that indicates that it's negative, and then 0, 0, 1. Well, 0, 0, 1 is 1, so this is negative 1. Right, okay, and we can see that this scheme kind of makes sense. Uh, we just treat that first bit as a negative sign, and the other three bits just as you would normally, um, just like the, the top half of the chart. Uh, and this, you know, we can follow this hopefully. Hopefully, that kind of is pretty clear uh, all the way down to negative seven. Um, but it doesn't work out so well if we're thinking mathematically. So, what I mean by that is, what if you try to actually perform some arithmetic? Um, for instance, let's just try to add negative 3 plus 1, right? So negative 3 plus 1, we all know, is negative 2. But if you look at this scheme that we've done here, negative 3 is represented by 1, 0, 1, 1. So 1, 0, 1, 1. 1 is represented just by 0, 0, 0, 1. And if you add those, well, we can add those. We get 1 plus 1, that's 2, so carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1, and then 1 plus 0 is 1. So the result is 1, 1, 0, 0. But if we look back at our table, 
one one zero zero is negative four and so we've added negative three plus one and got negative four which is the wrong answer right and so this means we'd have to handle negative numbers or arithmetic dealing with negative numbers differently than we handle arithmetic using positive numbers and so we'd have to have special logic for that to recognize okay this is a negative number so we have to do things differently uh, and then figure out what that difference is and and that's bad right so we've essentially broken math with our scheme here this scheme breaks the math that we're used to and so it's a bad scheme and so nobody does this computers do not use this representation so the point here is that it's not enough just to say, oh, well, the first bit being a zero indicates that it's a positive number, and the first bit being a one indicates that it's a negative number, because that doesn't give us an elegant solution for the mathematics. What can we do instead? Well, the scheme that you see here is the answer to that. And um, this is called two's complement. So all of these values have that implicit zero as the beginning bit, and um, the, the positive values have 0 as the beginning bit and the negative values have 1 as the beginning bit. But you can see it's different from the original scheme that we looked at in the last slide. The first eight numbers, 0 through 7, they're still the same as they've always been. They're the positive numbers that we already know how to work with. But once we get to what was 8, where there's a 1, 0, 0, 0, we now treat that as negative, as we said, because there's a beginning leftmost bit of 1, but rather than negative zero, we actually treat that as the most negative value we can represent, negative eight in this case. And as we add one down the table, we actually are adding one to the negative value, if that makes sense, right? So we can kind of see here, one zero 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 plus one is one zero zero one and negative eight plus one is negative seven. And so that part is correct, right? And we can actually try this with any two numbers, right? You can add two negative numbers, for instance. Like let's add um, negative three and negative two, right? We'll add those together. You and I know that that will give us negative five. But if we look at the representation now, right? The representation for negative three is one, one, zero, one. The representation for negative two is one, 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 zero. And if we add those, we get 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, which is 1, carry the 1. Now this bit, this carry bit, if we're dealing with 4-bit digit numbers, 4-bit numbers, this carry bit is called an overflow, right? It overflows the 4-bit buffer that we're using to store our numbers. And so we just lose this bit. It just disappears. It falls off the edge of the earth. But the result here is 1011. And if we look in our table, 1011 is negative 5. And that's exactly what we wanted. And so this scheme, this is called 2's complement. This scheme allows us to uh, use the same logic that we've used for positive numbers to deal with negative numbers when it comes to arithmetic and things like that. And so this is a great scheme. It's very elegant. It's very simple. We get everything that worked before with positive numbers. It'll work with negative numbers for free as long as we choose this representation. Okay. Now the question is, how do we generally um, create a representation for any number in two's complement, right? And that's what we want to look at next. So, in order to express a negative number in two's complement, we simply follow these three steps. Now, positive values they work just the same as they always did. We represent them the same way. But for negative numbers, what we do is we start out by writing the positive value in binary. So um, we take the, the value that was negative and we just drop off the sign and we write the positive value in binary. And then we take the complement. Now when we say the complement, we just mean flipping the ones and zeros, right? The complement of true is false. The complement of um, one is zero. And so we take the complement of each binary digit, each bit individually, and um, that's our step two. And then lastly, we just add one to that result. And after that addition, we will have our negative number represented in two's complement notation. And let's look at an example to kind of make that concrete. 
I want to write negative 35 in two's complement notation. Now back in this table, we were working with four bit numbers, right? Um, negative 35 doesn't fit in four bits, and so we're going to use eight bits, okay? Now here's the key. Remember, when we're writing in two's complement, the first, the most significant bit, the leftmost bit, is the sign. And so we need all eight bits. We can't, um, even though 35 will fit in fewer than eight bits, we actually need all eight because that first bit tells us the sign. And so, you know, we can sort of think, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? We need all eight bits. Uh, so first we write 35, right? So what's 35? Okay, well, 35, what's the largest power of 2 that fits into 35? Well, that's 32. Okay, so let's find that. Uh, this is the 1's place, 2's, 4's, 8's, 16, 32. This is a 1, okay? But I need to have these leading bits here in order to tell me the sign. So 0, this 0 in particular tells me that 35 is positive. Now, I know we want to represent negative 35, but the first step is to write positive 35. So, 32 is right here. Uh, if we take 32 from 35, we're left with 3. Okay, well, 3 is no 16s, no 8s, no 4s, a 2, and a 1. So, here's 34, or excuse me, 35. Next, we want to take the complement of this number. All right, well, the complement of this just changes every 0 to a 1 and every 1 to a 0. So 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. And now we have a leading 1. This indicates that it's going to be a negative number. And then lastly, we add 1 to this. So adding 1 to that is pretty simple. And this is now negative 35 in two's complement notation. Let's look at moving the other direction now. We're going to take a number that's written in two's complement notation and write the corresponding decimal value that it represents. And in order to do that, what we want to do is reverse the steps that we did to transfer a, a negative decimal into two's complement, right? And so those steps were these three, right? And so we want to reverse them but we need to start at the end and reverse them in reverse order. So we're going to start with step three here, which was add one to the result, and we're going to use that, we're going to subtract one, right? We're going to undo that step, and then we're going to move up to step two and undo taking the complement. Well, to untake the complement, we can just take the complement again, and then that will give us the, uh, the value as a positive number, and we can see what that was and, and figure out what it's representing. So. We've got this number here. I don't know what it is. I want to figure it out. And so my first step is to um, subtract 1 from this number. And when I say subtract 1, I just mean treat this as a binary number. Don't worry about that it's positive or negative. Just subtract 1 for it from it as it's written. right? So subtract 1. Now this might be actually a little bit more complicated than it seems because uh, we're having to carry, we're going to have to borrow from uh, larger digits here in order to, to, to perform this because 0 minus 1, I can't do 0 minus 1, so i got to borrow from the next digit over. But you know what? That's a 0 as well, so I'm going to have to borrow from the next digit over again. And when we borrow, uh, remember, that's a little different than when we do it in decimal, right? So if I had something like, I don't know, uh, 30, we'll keep it kind of simple, 30 minus 1, right? Well, I can't do 0 minus 1, so I borrow, right? I take 1 from this digit, and I make that 10, right? So I don't really want to write it that way. I'm going to write that as 10, okay? So this is 20 plus 10 is 30, so I still have 30. 10 minus 1 is 9, and then 29, right? It's the same kind of deal here, only it's not 10, right? I mean, it looks like 10, but it's actually 2, right? So here, this is a 4, right? I'm going to borrow 1 from this digit, which is going to leave me with nothing. I have nothing if I'm borrowing that. But that puts a 2 here, right? It looks like 10, but it's actually 2. Well, this is the 2's digits, so I have 2 in the 2's digit. Well, 2 2's is 4, and so 1 0 0, which is 4, is the same as 2 2's, which is also 4, right? Great. Well, now I need to borrow back into the first 1's digit, so I'm going to borrow 1 from from this value, 
Well, 1 from 2 leaves 1. And then this is a 2. Right? So I've got a 2 here, and then two ones. And 2 plus two ones is 4, which is still the same thing that I had. So we've got uh, this representation that still works the same way it did in decimal, but it's a little bit confusing if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. So this is 2, and I'm ready to subtract. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 minus 0 is 1. 0, okay, and the rest of these are all zero, so I can just bring those digits down directly. So now I've subtracted one from my original number and I've gotten this number, right? If you want to think of it a little bit easier, um, another way to think about this is to realize, okay, I want to subtract one from this big long number, but I really only need um, to subtract one from the end of it, and I see that this this is sort of the first place I have a one in the fours digit. What's four minus one? Four minus one is just three. So if I want to subtract one from this, I can just make this a three, which is zero, one, one, and that's what we've got here, okay? So however you want to think about it, but I just wanted to um, illustrate that a little bit because it's not quite as obvious as it might seem. Okay, great, we've undone step three. We've subtracted one that we added. Now we want to take the complement, okay? And the complement of this would be zero, one, zero, 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 one zero zero okay and this is now then the positive number of the value that I'm actually trying to represent so what is this number well ones twos fours so this is a four eight sixteen thirty two sixty four this is a sixty four this number is sixty eight which means that my original number was negative sixty eight that's the value that this represents.